<laughs> Ciao, dear hearts. I'm Kat, Katarina Giglio. Um, sometimes Katarina is a little hard to say, so people call me Kat. Um, and so welcome. And uh, first of all, thank you so much. We appreciate your thumbs up, your likes, your comments, your shares, uh, and your subscriptions. That helps our channel so much. And today we have um, part two of my miniature lap book. We're going to decorate it and uh, finish it up. And we're going to make some envelopes and do some fun things. So I can't wait to show you. If you remember last time, um, this is where we left off. So I've got the basic book made and we just have to cover it and get it all together. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, papers in the front and the back just to soften the book just slightly. And so I had two choices, um, either this antique parchment, which I thought looked really pretty too, um, or this, or tracing paper, which is something that I often use. And I was really thinking I was going to use this, but the antique parchment, but I think I really do like the white better. So we're going to do that. So what I did was I just folded the tracing paper over and I'm using Strathmore tracing paper and um, you can get it, um, I've got a link on there so you can get it on my Amazon link if you want to. And um, so I just simply folded it to the size of the pages. And what I'm going to do now, I've, I've got two of them folded together, so I'm just gonna cut it here, and then I'm going to glue it down on either side. And that's just gonna give a little buffer. And then of course we're gonna put our paper and cover this up next. So I just simply folded the paper over, measured it up to the size that I knew I wanted it for my book. And this edge, this end, we're gonna trim with uh, the deckel scissors. And so I'm just gonna cut it right here in the middle. And then I'm just gonna glue it down right there. I hope you can see this clearly. Um, so I'm just going to use gel matte medium and just glue this down um, right about there, I think. So I'm using a dry brush and this is just tracing paper, really simple, really super easy. I just love the way it looks, it makes a great envelope too. So there's a whole lot of uses for tracing paper in the studio. Okay, there's one. Now we're gonna do the other one. Okay, okay so I have them both glued down and now I'm just going to uh, edge the papers. And someone asked me about these scissors, and honestly, they're not the best scissors in the world. They're just those plastic ones. Um, I'm still looking for a good pair, and should I find them, I will definitely turn you on to them too. I'm gonna look in England and see if they have any there. And I go to Shepherds. Okay, this one's just a little bit longer than the other one, so I, but I, I kinda like that, so we're gonna see. <laughs> I quite like that, okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put our papers down here. Okay, so I went through my whole stash of papers. Believe me, I took everything out, and I came really close to using this antique paper just because it, it just looks so yummy. Uh, but I'm gonna use it for a pocket, and um, I think. So, uh, because I really liked the way this old scrapbooking paper um, worked and I'd love to be able to say I know where it came from <clears throat> but I don't I got it at a estate sale so um, I just like the the look of it <clears throat> and it's gonna make it a little bit more archival I mean remember we're using really old antique books I want it to last quite a while uh, so I just simply cut it down to fit and then I'm going to be really careful about the, the, the uh, this bend here um, because it's got to be it's got to be glued really nicely in here. Alrighty, so I'm going to put my uh, P 
PVA down and I'm going to use quite a bit. I didn't mean to get it that far actually. <laughs> but Bad mistakes happen in the studio. And um, I want to put a lot down because I want it to hold really well. Okay, I know it looks like a lot, but seriously. <laughs> we want it to stay down. So I've cut it to size. Just going to center it and try to stay out of the keep my crazy Italian hair out of the camera. I, I did pull it back today so <clears throat> so that you're not saying, cat, I can't see anything, your hair's in the way. That crazy Italian hair of yours. Okay, now, here we go. All right. Oh, so that's how we're gonna get the connection there. Now, if you were going to make a lap book at home, there's an opportunity that I'm not taking that you could, and that would be to make this a little bit wider and then put uh, a, some kind of elastic through underneath and then around and then put a pen in here. That would be, or a pencil or something like that, you could put a little one in there and that would be so cool. Um, but I'm not going to do that today, but you might want to do that. So I thought I would just give you that little tip. Now, I just want to make sure it's got a good connection because it is, we are going to um, need it to bend and turn over. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working this a bit and then we're going to do the next side. All right, so I'm all glued down on the inside. Doesn't that look great? I just love it. I think it's really cool. And this uh, scrapbooking paper was uh, almost like heavy as cardstock. It took quite a while and I had to use my bone folder to get this uh, really good connection and to depress it enough so that it would fold and bend. Um, but I think it's going to work out really well. So and now um, I'm going to start working on some little envelopes. and. So I wanted to come up with something that was kind of small that I could use to put little tokens and tiny little things in. So I came up with this and uh, it's called a diaper fold. You need a square piece of uh, paper and this is again scrapbooking scraps literally. Um, so you simply, I don't know if you know how to do this or not, but in case you don't, um, you simply fold it end to end. And then you fold the side up so that it is nice and flush here. And this side gets folded up so that it matches it. And you use your bone folder to depress and create crisp edges. And we are going to glue them down. And then you fold this and now you have this sweet little pocket. So this is gonna be for those little you know, metro tokens and tickets and little little strips of papery things. So I thought I would uh, put them in here somehow together. And of course they'll be glued so they won't pop up like that. Uh, but I think that's gonna be really fun. Okay, so I've glued them together uh, so that they're not popping up anymore. And now I'm just gluing the backs and kind of fitting them together. Um, and I think, I think I like it like this. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, so we've got one pocket here. And one pocket here. Woohoo! Alright, now we're going to push them down just a little bit. Okay, now, envelopes. Next. Okay, so I did. I went searching for an envelope that would fit because you know how I love clear envelopes or something that is kind of see-through-ish. And so I decided I used this. I actually bought this <laughs> to use for something else, but but 
you know, in the studio we sacrifice things to make new things. So uh, anyway, it fit perfectly. It was like absolute perfect size. So I thought, okay, we're just gonna tear it apart. Um, and while it matches perfectly, I didn't want it to be uh, brown. I wanted it to be parchment paper. So that's what I did. I just simply traced it, used it for, as a template, instead of, I think last time I used uh, tracing paper, but we used parchment paper. Just plain old kitchen parchment paper, non-stick, um, really fun stuff. So I'm going to erase my lines and glue it up and poke it into the book and it's going to go right here. And that's gonna look really nice with these pages too, I think. Okay. And I just put the glue down. I'm gonna set this down and try to make sure it's even or sort of close to it. It's kind of hard to see without getting my hair in the way. <laughs> okay, now you wanna glue it just lightly and um, use as little water as possible uh, so that it doesn't make it warp too much. It will dry, but still, you know. Okay, so that's one down. We've got a gusseted envelope coming up next. All right, I promised you a gusseted envelope, so we're making one. And I just made it out of regular cardstock. Um, you can use any kind of cardstock that you want. And what I did was I used another envelope um, as my template. Um, I kept it intact, really, and I just cut down the sides and then um, just folded it up so that I had the basic envelope, fold and top, okay? And then we made the gussets, okay? Now, what it, a gusset is just basically an accordion fold. So you can make it, you can, you know, make as many accordion folds as you want um, to fit into your book, okay? Um, and then you want to you curve, you want to cut the top so that it's just slightly curved. So this will be glued into your envelope and this end will be glued into your envelope like this and like this. Okay, so you can have as many, you can make it as big as you want. But I just wanted it to be really simple just to show you how to do it. Super easy. So I'm going to glue that together and then I've got the other side. I used this as a template. I just laid it down and traced around it and I'm going to draw another one and um, cut that out, fold it, and glue them together. And we'll be done. Okay, a little bit of glue. I'm not getting it on my hands, I promise. Just using a little gel medium. Yeah, no, I did get it on me. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. Alrighty, we've got our little gusseted envelope. You can see inside. I didn't want it too fat and too thick because obviously my book won't close. So I am going to, I believe, put it right here. Matches pretty well, don't you think? And I've got a little embellishment right here for later. I I love this paper. I just thought it was so beautiful and I really did want to use it. <clears throat> After a while I thought maybe I would just use it for some embellishments and then I thought you know I could make uh, a little pocket out of it uh, that wouldn't get a whole lot of wear but just you know I wanted to use it in some way so I could tuck some small things into it. So I decided to make a little pocket right here and I folded it uh, so I cut it 
the size that I needed to fit here and then I folded it and then I folded it again and I'm going to glue it down so that I'll be able to just fit little things in the side here like this. Um, so I'm going to leave the folds because it's so old. Um, <clears throat> I think it's going to need the extra fold. Uh, if I just, you know, cut it, um, I think it'll rip. So I'm just going to lightly glue the sides and um, I'll probably come back with some clear gesso uh, to uh, give it a little bit more oomph. So I'm just gonna glue it down now. So this so. is how the pocket's going to work. I might have to add a little bit more glue here, but as you can see, I'm gonna be able to poke things in here. So I think it'll be really lovely. Okay, so I hope you can see the inside of the book now. Pocket is pretty much glued in and um, these little guys are glued in and I've got envelopes on both ends and I really like the way it's it's working out here and so I'm ready to work on the cover and I decided since we're going to Denmark and to London that uh, I wouldn't use a fleur de lis I wouldn't use my own personal symbol, I would use the symbol of the crown. And so I have a lot of uh, Dresden crowns that I thought I would um, poke in here in different ways. Um, I thought that would look really cute there. Uh, and But uh, shiny is not my thing. I know you know that because I always tell you how I'm not a shiny girl. Um, so I just simply used a little bit of raw umber. Um, and painted um, my crown. And so that's what I'm going to do with this one too. So I've got it all painted and this is going to go on the front cover. But let me show you how I did this. Okay, so I simply, I'm going to take my uh, pencil and hold it down. So just paint it and then you're going to rub it off. So you just want to tarnish it just slightly so that it doesn't have that Hi, I'm brand new, look. <laughs> so, and then just simply use your cloth to take the extra off so that it's just not, not quite so bright. Um, you can also go back with sandpaper on um, parts of it so that uh, the gold will come back through. But I love these old uh, Dresden foils. I think they're just so fun and so cool. And I think it's just gonna work really perfectly on here. Okay, so I've got this little piece of, it's actually a um, little piece of mixed media paper and I collaged it and uh, I found this little piece that said Denmark and so I decided to put that down and now I'm going to glue my crown down just lightly. And we're gonna let that dry and then put it on the front of the book. Okay, I finished my collage and I'm just gluing the back to the front of my book. And I'm leaving space because I decided I absolutely love this old French uh, ribbon. It's uh, gold and uh, this wonderful blue. It's probably about the same age as the book, so I'm thinking, um, but um, I've had it forever and it absolutely matches perfectly, so I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do because I have this feeling that this thing is going to be just jam-packed with stuff. And, uh, and so I think I'm going to absolutely love it. What do you think? So here's the completed lap book little um, envelopes, my pages ready to be written in, my little envelope, my antique um, little side packet, and uh, my gusseted envelope. All set, all ready. I can't wait to fill this up. And um, the cover is almost completely dry. And I just love the way the French ribbon looks with it, don't you?
Well, we're at Chow for now, and um, we're gonna be traveling, and uh, we'll be gone for a few weeks. So this is a nice long video. I hope you have fun. I hope you all make a lap book and um, enjoy the process as much as I've enjoyed making it with you. And um, until I see you next time, ciao, ciao.